Hello my shimmering stars today I Shora Grover welcome you all to this amazing platform of PW English so yes my dear students today we are going to start with lecture number 5 based on the chapter coordination compound under our batch excellence batch i hope so you have seen the previous lecture and all the topics were clear to you so students before proceeding to today's session let me tell you one thing life challenges are not supposed to paralyze you life challenges are not supposed to paralyze you they are supposed to help you become who you really are so trust this process of challenges trust this process where you are working really very hard day in and day out for your goal because one day you will be achieving it if you really work hard yes So students we shall start our today's session with this quote and with a beautiful smile. So <coughs> sorry. So as our session is based upon the lecture number 5 and the chapter is coordination compound and you know in the previous lecture we have completed our crystal field theory with respect to octahedral complex. So today we shall be covering with respect to tetrahedral complex. with respect to square planar complex and then we are going to understand about the isomerism concept so we shall start our today's session with the very first topic right so students before going on to that we shall write the topics to be covered today so that you will be having a kind of a map that how we are going to proceed okay so topics to be covered are going to be very first is crystal field splitting in tetrahedral complex and then we shall study about crystal field splitting as well as energy as well as the theory segment in square planar complex and then students we are going to understand about isomerism is it clear to you all so let us start our today's session with the very first topic that we have with us but before going on to that segment we are going to revise the octahedral complex because see they are so correlated that you might get confused so i shall give you a quick recap of the previous session that we have already done now when i talk about crystal field theory or the crystal field splitting with respect to octahedral one you should know that when whatsoever i am talking about octahedral complex i am talking about the coordination number over here shall be 6 now when we are talking about octahedral one we were saying that the ligands were approaching towards the central metal atom in such a way that the degeneracy just broke broke down now what happened next you have seen that we have basically the 5d orbitals like this yes they have the same energy same energy now what happened ligands are approaching when ligands are approaching their degeneracy broke down so when their degeneracy broke down you shall be seeing that the energy level increased like this and after that the ligands align themselves in such a way that you shall see their geometry that you will be observing that dx square y square and dz square my dear students shall have more energy why because ligands are approaching from which end ligands are approaching from which end towards the axis they are approaching towards the axis and which of the following orbitals you know lobes are seen towards the axis on the axis that are dx square y square and dz square respectively so do you remember in the previous lecture i told you this thing that when lobes are present in between the axis they will have the less energy because the ligands are approaching from the opposite side so so over here dxy dyz and dzx shall have less energy because here the lobes are present in between the axes right this was about the octahedral complex yes now students if you look up to this this i have made already there are 5d orbitals that we have right when the ligands were approaching their degeneracy broke down after that what happened the two orbitals the dx square y square and the dz square now this diagram is taken from ncrt you can also open your ncrt with there 
the this dx square y square and dz square shall have more energy and they have less energy this is referred to as berry center and the value above this berry center was how much it was positive of 0.6 and this was minus 0.4 delta not delta not here not or i would say o stands for the octahedral complex now students just look over here we have our today segment that is crystal field splitting in the tetrahedral complex so when i talk about tetrahedral complex if you remember in the previous to previous session when we were talking with respect to the valence bond theory and i gave you a show you a table that uh, what shall be the hybridization and uh, what shall be the geometry section so over there i told you that if coordination number 4 is seen then we can see two kinds of geometry one is the tetrahedral one another one is the square planar one so now it is very essential for us to understand that when tetrahedral geometry will be seen and when square planar geometry will be seen right because in octahedral geometry you will be seeing coordination number 6 but with respect to coordination number 4 we have two kinds of geometry now what do you refer to the term coordination number ma'am coordination number refers to as number of donor atoms present over there which are attached with the central metal atom or which are dono donating their lone pair of electrons to the central metal atom am i right now that means here if coordination number is 4 then how many ligands are present four ligands are present Yes if coordination number was 6 how many ligands were present 6 were present now coming back to the segment understand this concept very clearly if you remember in the previous session if you see in the previous session what we did this was your z axis this is your which axis this is your z axis if this is your positive z axis this is your minus of z axis you know you have seen the graphical section plus x uh, plus x axis minus x axis plus y minus y plus z minus z so this is what is happening over here here this is positive x plus x this is minus x let us say this is plus y and this is minus y now this is a kind of a 3d arrangement that i am showing you over here now what is going to happen next see over here what is going to happen next now ligands will be approaching towards the central metal atom initially what was happening initially the ligands were approaching like this now we will be having how many ligands ma'am four ligands why four ligands because the coordination number is four so the ligands shall be four now when the ligands are approaching towards the central metal atom here is the central metal atom m okay as they are approaching they initially had same energy now when the ligands approached their degeneracy broke down and when their degeneracy broke down it breaks out what happens next what happens next see see what will happen next they will align themselves they will align themselves in such a way in such a way in such a way students that one of the ligand shall be coming from this end one of the ligand shall be coming from this end one of the ligand shall be coming from this end and one shall be coming from this end now let me show you what is going to happen next let me show you what is going to happen next see here basically what is happening here basically if this is our z axis this is positive z this is minus z this is plus x this is minus x this is plus y and this is minus y respectively we have central metal atom over here i told you initially my dear students they have they have this must energy this is the same energy level if, if i talk about dxy dyz dzx dx square y square and dz square respectively they have same energy now when ligands approached what will happen their degeneracy will break down now they won't have the same energy why because there is a repulsion because crystal field theory is based upon the electrostatic model am i right okay <coughs> now if the degeneracy breaks down the energy level increases now this is moving from lower energy level towards the higher energy level now what will happen next kindly observe what will happen ligands will now assign themselves in such a way that one of the ligands is approaching from this end one from this one from this and one from this one from this okay now let us talk about the d orbitals of the central metal atom how many orbitals five orbitals let us draw it over here okay let us draw see initially if you don't remember in the previous session this is dxy that means when the lobes are present in between the axes like this x and y this is dyz that means between y and z lobes present it in between y and z when i talk about dzx that means this is x axis z axis 
lobes present in between the axes. Okay. Other than this, what we were having? Other than this, ma'am, we had d x square y square. That means lobes are present. Lobes are present on the axis, on x axis and on y axis respectively. Okay, great. Now, if I talk about one more, that is d z square. If it is z axis, it can be x and y respectively. Lobe is present on the z axis and uh, kind of a ring is present over here. Right. So, this is basically the d orbitals. Now, we shall draw it over here of the central metal atom. See, this is which one? This is d z square. Lobes on the z axis and, and a ring. Other, <laughs> other than this, this is d x y d x square y square d x square y square lobes on the axis okay now taking one more color take a let us take a yellow color now if i make some lobes over here these lobes are what which lobes the ones which are present in between the axis the ones which are present in between the axis now if you observe this diagram very carefully ligands are approaching in between the axis towards in between the axis not see if they approach from this end from this end that means they are approaching on the axis okay and if they are approaching like this like this and like this that is it means in between the axis in between the axis so when they are approaching towards that segment where they are present in between the axis that means that ligands shall have more energy they will have more energy so what we will do what we observe over here, which one will have more energy now? Over here, the scenario now changes. Here now, dxy, dyz and dzx shall have more energy and dz, dx square, y square and dz square will have less energy. They will have less energy, right? Now, the energy gap between these two is referred to as delta t what it is referred to as delta t is it clear to you people okay also students in the previous segment in this previous case in the octahedral one if i talk about see in the octahedral one it was positive of 0 0.6 and minus of 0 0.4 obviously so over here it will be now positive of 0 0.4 and minus of 0 0.6 delta t here t stands for tetrahedral complex t stands for tetrahedral complex i want you all to kindly write it down so that we can move on to our next part kindly write it down students so that we can move on to our next part <coughs> this is really very important this is really very important in your ncrt student octahedral and tetrahedral complex are explained while square planar complex is not done but yes it is in syllabus so we need to do it and i'll let you know what is about the square planar complex so before i'm going on to that topic kindly write it down first of all initially draw the structure and then draw the crystal field splitting diagram this is basically refers to as crystal field splitting diagram okay crystal field splitting diagram is it clear is it clear to you all okay okay students now if i ask you how will you calculate the cfse value that is crystal field splitting energy value do let me know how you will calculate just as you have calculated in octahedral one similarly here you will calculate how you will calculate ma'am see if initially have one more thing one more thing before telling you the cfse value as you remember in the previous case when i was talking about the octahedral complexes i told you there were two cases that we saw one was for weak field ligand another one was for strong field ligand and in both of the complexes i told you one of them is low spin complex another one is high spin complex so over here let me tell you students when i am talking about the tetrahedral complex then we shall always be talking about the weak field ligand there is no uh, issue about the strong field ligand because it shows high spin complexes it shows high spin complexes and in high spin complexes basically students what we observe we always have a weak field ligand we always have weak field ligand we have weak field ligand is it clear is it clear to you all we always have weak field ligand 
shall we start to the next topic of ours okay so see this is the uh, diagram from the ncrt as i've already told you initially the electrons shall be filled in the lower energy value now they both have the lower energies and they have the higher energy because the, these are present below and they are present above now if you remember this particular region that i'm talking about is berry center and it is the average energy that we used to have great and over here if you see students how you have to fill electrons for example if i have one electron over here and if i if i'm uh, if i've put this electron over here here that means this is one electron this is one electron so initially if you have one electron and you need to calculate the cfse value for that how you will calculate it see the cfse value how you will calculate it now you should know that this a uh, very basic thing that there is one electron in the low energy value and you are talking about the tetrahedral complex so this basically that we have is minus 0.6 delta t that means 1 into minus 0.6 delta t plus now we have zero electrons into 0.4 what shall we have over here we will get minus 0.6 delta t as the cfse value when there is only one electron present over here okay so if i talk when you have two electrons when you have two electrons let us see this is for one electron that is for d1 now if you have two electrons what shall happen here you have now this thing so let us write it over here if we talk about two electron that is for d2 what shall we get 2 into minus 0.6 plus 0 into minus 0.4 because there is zero electrons present in the 0.4 this one dx y d y z and d z x respectively we have no electrons over here so we have to multiply it with zero so hence what we will calculate we will calculate minus 1.2 delta similarly students now if we have three electrons understand this very basic thing then this is one electron two electron three electron one electron two electron three electron what we will see one electron two electron now i have already told you in the case of tetrahedral complex my dear students there is weak field ligand there is there shall be what what happens in strong field ligand and weak field ligand in strong field ligand pairing al always occurs but in the weak field ligand there is no pairing hence the third electron will enter into the higher energy level not into the lower energy level because if it would have been strong field ligand then there shall be pairing and then there shall be the third electron over here in this dx square y square orbital but it's not true because the here is weak field ligand so there shall be no pairing so the third electron shall move on to the higher energy value so how uh, we'll calculate the cfse value for d3 for d3 how many electrons in the uh, you know the lower energy one two so 2 into minus 0.6 plus how many electrons over there in the higher energy level then we have one electron into plus 0.4 what shall we calculate it is minus 1.2 plus 0.4 what will calculate it is minus 0.8 delta t is it clear is it clear to you all kindly write it down kindly write it down kindly write it down is it clear now this was all about students the tetrahedral complex now we shall proceed towards the next segment of ours that is about the square planar comp uh, complex but before going on to that see the ncrt these are the 5d orbitals now when they were approaching towards the central metal atom the degeneracy broke down and they move on to the higher energy values so now they have higher energy now the ligands will you know uh, they will align themselves in such a way that they will move from which sides towards that side in which the lobes are present in between the axes that means from uh, which angle they will proceed towards dxy dyz and dzx respectively so the dxy dyz and dzx uh, will have higher energy value in comparison with dx square y square and dz square now this is referred to as t2 and this is referred to as e in the previous case we have the t2g values as the lower energy values and the eg values were the higher energy values but in the case of tetrahedral one now we have t2 value more and e value as less is it clear to you all okay now here you can see this sum is equivalent to 0.4 also it is present above the average line so it is positive of 0.4 and this is minus 0.6 and this basic difference between them is delta t this is delta t t here stands for tetrahedral complex great great okay now students we shall talk about the square planar complex 
we shall talk about the crystal field theory with regard to sorry sorry okay so we shall talk about the crystal field theory with regard to the square planar complex now it is quite different with respect to the tetrahedral one and with respect to the octahedral one okay in square planar over here students what shall be the coordination number again we have done that when the coordination number was 4 there were two kinds of geometry that were exhibited which one tetrahedral and the square planar tetrahedral we have already seen that how the ligands align themselves but in the case of square planar complex how ligands will assign they will assign in a different way and you shall be seeing the you know the diagram the crystal field splitting diagram quite different from that of tetrahedral and from the octahedral as well so see what is going to happen over here first of all we shall draw our diagram over here this is our central metal atom m now this is assumed as our z axis this is positive the z this is minus z this is plus x this is minus x this is plus y this is minus y am i right am i right okay now this is a kind of a 3d structure that you are observing over here now look very very carefully first of all we shall draw all the d orbitals over here along with the central metal atom so while you know uh, drawing this d orbitals over here initially we will draw the orbitals that are present on the axis for example first of all we will draw the d x square y square this is the d x square y square am i right now other than this was dz square other than this was dz square like this okay now they both were when the lobes are present on the axis okay now we shall draw the ones that is when the lobes are present in between the axis that means like this i can show it with dotted i am drawing this lobes with the dotted lines is it clear to you people that means dxy dyz and dzx they are the one when the lobes are present in between the axis now understand the concept which i want you all to uh, see over here again we have four ligands in tetrahedral also we had four ligands now in both of the cases if we have four ligands and we know that when the ligands are approaching towards the central metal atom ma'am how will they align themselves this see basically alignment is all the issue that is causing the different structures in all of these cases so now what is going to happen next let us assume let us see that ligands initially were present like this okay when they were initially present like this so basically we have this 5d orbitals over here now here at the when the ligands were not present they had equal energies great great okay now what will happen next their energy level shall increase because the degeneracy broke down why degeneracy broke down because there was a repulsion between the electrons of the ligand and the central metal atom because crystal field theory is based upon the electrostatic model that's why so there shall be the repulsion between the electrons of the ligands and the central metal atom hence it will uh, change the energy levels for all the 5d orbitals so the degeneracy broke down now this is the very important concept that you should understand over here what is happening next ma'am here now these ligands when they come close they will align themselves in such a way that one ligand will come from this side another one will come from this side the third one shall come from this side and the fourth one will come from this side ligands are basically the ones which are donating their lone pair of electrons and while when we were talking about the crystal field splitting diagram we were saying that there is a kind of electrostatic attraction between the ligand and the central metal atom so now they are showing the interaction in such a way that they have aligned from the four ends from the four sides now what will happen now just let me know that which of the following orbital is you know observed over here when from which sides the ligands are arising the ligands are arising towards the x square y square complex again i am uh, drawing over here if you feel um okay again i'll draw over here see in the x square y square it is like this no this is x axis y axis so this is what is doing over here just see that means that means that means the x square y square shall have the highest energy they will have the highest energy okay now another thing most important thing now see ligands is coming from this end from this end so which will show more repulsion see basically this is a kind of a 3d structure that we are saying if i am saying this is the z axis i am saying this is the x axis and this is the y axis ligands are approaching here so it will show effect to, to which of the following loops x square 
y square because they are present and in between the x y also now if you look up to the 2d structure over here you will say ma'am z is also feeling kind of a repulsion from the ligand no not at all not at all why because see z axis is like this we have this z axis and then we have this x axis and then the, we have this y axis so z is basically kind of a perpendicular over here no so it won't face any kind of repulsion which will face repulsion the ones that is the dx square y square and the ones in between the dx square and y square now the ones when the lobes are present in between the axis they are referred to as what dxy yes yes great that means the uh, the lower one after dx square y square shall be dxy are you getting my point okay after that which will have after that again see you know that the ones now the z1 will face that means dz square and at last the lowest will be dyz and d z x respectively is it clear is it clear so this is the energy level diagram for square planar complex quite simple quite simple quite easy i want you all to write it down so that we can move on to our next part <coughs> kindly write it down <coughs> see it is quite simple over here if you talk about crystal field splitting diagram with regard to square planar complex i'll explain you all over again just i want you all to write it down then we'll do a quick recap okay okay now when so ever you have to fill electrons in the case of the square planar complex how will you fill the electron in the case of square planar complex let us say that if you have one electron over here let us say that if you have one electron ma'am over here how it will fill if it is one electron one electron shall be present over here so this is the lower energy level initially the electron shall be filling in the dyz and dzx then the electron shall fill into dz square after that electron will enter into dxy and at last it will enter into dx square and y square because this is basically like this from lower energy towards the higher energy from which energy from lower energy towards the higher energy is it clear okay now moving on to the next part let me give you a quick recap okay we'll do the recap at last initially okay let's do the recap and then we'll move on to the next part of our isomerism it is very simple it is quite easy you'll get it first of all again if you want to compare all of these three i shall let you know what is happening in the octahedral this was the octahedral this was the central metal atom this is the z axis this is the x axis this is the y axis am i right in the case of octahedral complex what was happening the ligands have aligned themselves like this the ligands have aligned themselves in such a way am i right now all of these six ligands have aligned themselves in such a way so initially they all had the same energy that we were observing they five the five orbitals were having the same energy when ligands came close their energy level increased because the degeneracy broke down now if their energy level is increased over here now the ligands shall come more closer and they will align themselves that they are approaching from all the six ends now when they are approaching from all the six ends we have seen over here that this is basically the dx square or y square respectively and this is basically this is basically the dz square one so which will have more energy values over here these two will have more energy values over here and these three shall have the less energy values because these three are the ones these three are the ones in which the lobes are present in between the axes like this yes clear so just observe it over here they are referred to as your t2g and they are referred to as your eg 
the difference between them is referred to as delta not here not stands for octahedral complex and this basically is the berry center that is the average energy that you shall observe over here and and this level basically is minus 0.4 delta not and this is positive of 0.6 delta not great okay ma'am now when i'm talking about this is basically the structure which i've already made i hope so it is clear to you now when i'm talking about crystal field splitting in tetrahedral what let me explain it and then we shall read from the ncrt lines as well the ligands shall come in between the axes like this so let us read what ncrt states crystal field splitting in tetrahedral coordinate and tight is in tetrahedral coordination um basically the d orbital splitting is inverted that means it is quite different with regard to the octahedral one okay and is smaller as compared to the octahedral field splitting you shall see that the tetrahedral one is smaller with regard to the octahedral one now see over here for the same metal now if we have the same metal the same ligands and the metal ligand distance they basically they have given you a formula of the tetrahedral one and the octahedral one what is this basic formula they have seen uh, told that delta t is equivalent to 4 by 9 of delta not okay this is really very important this you should know they can ask you in some kind of a mcq session over here okay then consequently the orbital splitting energies are not sufficiently large for forcing pairing again i told you what i told you the tetrahedral complex when we are talking about this complex here we shall always be talking about weak field ligand which kind of ligand weak field ligand and when there is a weak field ligand my dear students then there is then there is no pairing then there is no pairing so this is what is written their low spin configurations are rarely observed <coughs> that means uh, strong field ligand is rarely observed there shall be only weak field ligand where is no pairing that means there shall be high spin complex high spin complex okay now see over here the g subscript is used for octahedral now you shall be observing you have not you might be thinking that here ma'am when you were drawing this diagram here <coughs> uh sorry where is the diagram gone okay here ma'am when you were drawing this diagram you refer to as g and t2 you uh, e and t2 you have not seen t2g or eg why is it so so here is the reason that is being provided to you see they say that the g subscript that we use is used for the octahedral one and the square planar complex which have the center of symmetry because they have the center of symmetry but in the case of tetrahedral they don't have any center of symmetry hence here we can say that we don't use the g subscript is it clear since tetrahedral complex is lack symmetry g subscript is not used with the energy levels hence here we only use e and t2 we will not use you can even write it and put across so that you will remember here you will not use eg and t2g this is important which many of the students don't know which many of the students even don't know is it clear to you people great that's good now moving on to the next part this i have already told you here we have calculated till d3 now we shall calculate it further just see over here if we have four electrons over here my dear students and here what is happening here if we talk about the tetrahedral complex which will have more energy obviously ma'am dx y dy z and dzx this i am talking about tetrahedral one this i'm talking about tetrahedral one in the case of tetrahedral one the lower ones are now dx square y square and the dz square the lower ones are dx square y square and the dz square and the higher ones are this one that is dx y dy z and dzx and here what will be the cfse value here i am writing arrangement do remember in tetrahedral always weak field ligand then there is no pairing let us find the cfse values okay if i say for d4 one electron will go two electron 
then there is no pairing so the next electron shall go over here and the next will go over here am i right if you don't remember the values over here students you should know the values also they are really very important for the low end one now it is inverted here it will be now minus 0.6 here it will be minus 0.6 and here shall be positive of 0.4 so what is the cfse value how many electrons two electrons so 2 into minus 0.6 delta t here you can write delta t plus how many electrons in this 2 so 2 into positive of 0.4 so what shall be our answer 2 into minus 0.6 is minus 1.2 plus 0.8 so what shall be the answer it shall be minus 0.4 delta t is it clear to you all okay similarly can we calculate for the next one if we have d5 again this is our dx square y square this is dz square then we have 3 dxy dyz and dzx respectively so how you will equate the electrons over here one electron two electron three four and five there shall be no pairing because we are talking with regard to the weak field ligand so how you will calculate the cfse value how many electrons in the lower one two electrons what is the value for the lower one it is minus 0.6 delta t now plus we have how many electrons in the higher energy values we have three electrons so 3 into 0.4 delta t so what shall be our answer it shall be minus 1.2 delta t plus uh, 1.2 delta t hence the answer comes out to be 0 for this case now if i ask you about the next one let us talk about the d6 configuration now with regard to the d6 again we shall be drawing over here this is dx square y square then we have the dz square values and this is the dxy dyz and dzx respectively am i right now here we have to calculate the cfse values so look over here how many electrons six so 1 2 3 4 5 and now it will come to the lower energy value as 6 if you want to see over here you can see over here also 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 will come over here is it clear now just see over here what will happen next when we are talking about three electrons now they are present in the lower energy value so 3 into minus 0.6 delta t plus then we shall have three electrons over here so 3 into 0.4 delta t what we will get over here minus 1.8 delta t plus 1.2 delta t so what shall be answer it is minus 0.6 delta t is it clear to you all if it is clear to you all kindly write it down so that we can move on to our next part that is the for the next configurations kindly write it down so that we can move on to next part okay now let us write for d7 okay let us write for d7 now here we have again dx square y square here we have dz square and then we have the three one dxy dyz and dzx respectively so students again we have to fill the electrons over here this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 again we need to calculate the cfse value now how many electrons in the lower one 4 so 4 into minus 0.6 now we have plus how many over here 3 so 3 into positive of 0.4 delta t what shall we calculate it will be minus 2.4 plus 1.2 that means minus 1.2 delta t is it clear to you people okay now let us do one more case over here that is about d8 again we shall be writing this is dx square y square see this i am not making again and again the diagram i am just writing the values of the orbitals diagram now you can make by your own as well okay so here shall be another one the three one that is dxy dyz and dzx respectively so here students if you observe we have eight electrons 1 2 3 Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, what we will be observing over here, if I have to calculate the CFSE value, four electrons are present over here. Four into minus zero point six plus how many electrons over here? Again, four. So, four into positive of zero point four. That means minus two point four plus positive of one point six. That comes out to be minus zero point eight delta T. Is it clear to you, people? I guess now this is clear to you. Kindly write it down. then we shall have d9 and d10 and it ends our topic over here <clears throat> 
okay now comes d9 again dx square y square dz square sorry here i have not written yes so this is dxy dyz and dzx respectively so nine electrons 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 cfse value you have to calculate it is referred to as your homework great okay now for the d10 also i shall be showing you this is basically dx square y square 1 and this is basically for dz square then you have three that is dxy dyz and dzx respectively now it is one electron two electron three electron four electron five six seven eight nine and ten kindly write it down and also calculate the cfse value for this also as your homework i hope so in the previous class that what i have given you as a homework you have already done my dear students yes shall we proceed to the next part okay <coughs> okay now come students next part that is isomerism see basically isomers or isomerism when we talk about it is quite simple thing when basically we have same molecular formula but different structures or in at least one different physical property that is referred to as isomerism basically isomers are two or more compounds that have the same chemical formula or the molecular formula you can say but a different arrangement of atoms a different kind of a structures you can see because of the different arrangement of atoms they differ in one or more physical or chemical property so the correct definition if i talk about isomerism will be what the correct definition with regard to isomerism is that isomers are those compounds which basically have same molecular formula but at least there is a difference in one of the physical properties is it clear to you great now see over here the two principal types of isomerism are known among the coordination compounds basically uh, you know when you divide isomerism there are two kinds let me tell you the initial two kinds they are the structural isomerism and the another one is i guess this this went off over there okay let me write over here one is structural isomerism and another one is stereo isomerism so basically when you talk about the structural isomerism it is quite simple when the molecular formula again the definition will remain same they shall have the same molecular formula but at least one different physical property so when i talk about the structural isomerism that means that one different property is difference in structure so if if we focus on the very first one on the very first one over here we can say isomers which have same molecular formula which have same molecular formula but different structures so that is basically your structural isomerism now structural isomerism students is further categorized structural isomerism is further categorized it is categorized into ionization isomerism okay here you will see that the ions interchange their position i'll let you know how i'll give you one example you will get to know first is ionization isomerism then is coordination isomerism then is coordination isomerism another one is linkage isomerism and the last is hydration isomerism so these are the types of structural isomerism that you shall be studying that you shall be understanding is it clear to you people okay students now this is the second kind which we shall discuss in the next lecture of ours today uh, in next lecture now we shall 
be covering our isomerism topic and there is a kind of a stability topic a very small topic after that we'll be doing the practice session and also the bonding in the metal carbonyl so we'll cover that with regard to ncrt and tomorrow's lecture will be the most important one because i'm going to bring a lot of questions with regard to your examination so you can practice in that practice session so be prepared for it and also read your ncrt so your today's homework is read your ncrt also solve ncrt back exercise great students so yes so we shall meet in the next lecture till then you have to work really very hard and also be positive in life whatsoever the situations you face and keep smiling so we shall meet in the next lecture till then keep smiling keep learning thank you so much and have a good day